name is Emma, I'm a nutrition scientist working at the British Nutrition Foundation and I'm here today with Nabil who works as a chef in London. In this video podcast we'll be looking at the macronutrient fat, its functions, sources in the diet and how much is being consumed in the UK. Nabil will be showing us some practical ideas about how to cut down on fat when we're cooking. Thanks Emma, that's right, I'll be cooking a chicken tikka masala and showing you a different range of ideas how to reduce fat when you cook in your meals and dishes. While Nabil is cooking the food, let's take a look at fat more closely. Fat is a macronutrient which provides energy and essential fatty acids that the body cannot make itself. One gram of fat provides 37 kilojoules, more than double that provided by protein or carbohydrate. Fat is also a carrier for fat-soluble vitamins and is necessary for their absorption. This includes the vitamins A, D, E and K. To maintain good health, we need fat in our diet. What is important is the type of fat we are eating. Fat is made up from different types of fatty acids and glycerol. Fatty acids are classified as saturated, monounsaturated or polyunsaturated, depending on the chemical structure. Having a diet that is high in fat, particularly saturated fatty acids, can have an adverse effect on our health. Saturated fatty acids can be found in the following foods. Milk, meat, cereals, fat spreads, and eggs. Consuming a diet that is low in saturated fatty acids, but high in mono and polyunsaturated fatty acids, is associated with a number of health benefits in the context of a varied and balanced diet. Mono and polyunsaturated fatty acids can be found in the following foods. Avocado, nuts and seeds, olive sunflower and rapeseed oil and spreads with these, lean meats and oily fish such as salmon and sardines. In the UK, the average total fat intake is close to the 35% of food energy recommended as an average for the population. Saturated fat, however, currently contributes 13% of food energy, which is above the recommended maximum of 11%. So our total dietary fat intake is not above the recommended target, but if you want to reduce your energy intake, it's a good idea to reduce the fat content of the diet. As our saturated fat intake is generally above the recommended maximum amount, many of us need to reduce the amount of this type of fat we consume. The average adult man should have no more than 30 grams of saturated fat each day. The average adult woman should have no more than 20 grams of saturated fat each day. Children and young people should have less saturated fat than adults, but remember that a low-fat diet isn't suitable for children under 5 years of age. A high fat intake, and in particular a high saturated fat intake, has been associated with raised blood cholesterol levels. This can increase our risk of developing heart disease, some cancers and diabetes in later life. So Nabil, this is why we're in the kitchen today to learn about fat and ways to cut back. And what about the increasing rate of overweight and obesity? Britain has one of the highest rates of obesity in Europe. Fat is a concentrated source of energy in the diet. Eating foods high in fat makes it easy to consume more energy than we need. This means that we might be more likely to put on weight if we eat a lot of foods high in fat over time. Fat may have a less filling or satiating effect than other food components such as protein and fiber. This means it is easier to consume excess energy when eating a diet high in fat. If energy intake and expenditure are unbalanced, then the excess energy in the body is stored as body fat, which may over time result in an individual becoming overweight or obese. That's why it's important to be active and consume an appropriate amount of energy. The key message is to consume a small amount of foods that are high in fat, to cut down on saturated fat and try to be active every day. Well, with this in mind, let me show you a lower fat version of chicken tikka masala. First, I'm going to remove the skin from the chicken breast. This helps to reduce the fat content of the dish. Then I will chop into chunks using a non-stick frying pan, means I can use less or no fat and not worry about the food sticking to the bottom of the pan. And season the chicken with some spices. Sometimes people use spray oil. 
to limit the use of the oil. I'm using a spoon to add the oil. This is to ensure I don't add too much accidentally. Once cooked, take the chicken out of the frying pan and set aside the onion, garlic and peppers are fried in hot oil and set aside. The spices are cardamom, turmeric, coriander, ginger, cumin and chili powder. We turn to the pan then we have to blind before adding finely chopped tomato and tomato puree and add the water. We turn the meat to the pan bring to the boil and then reduce the heat to simmer for about 10 minutes. When the liquid had reduced, steer through the low fat from ashway. Once again, another opportunity to reduce the fat of the dish. And steer in the freshly chopped coriander. Mmm, smells good. It's really tasty. Thank you. There are many ways to reduce saturated fat in the diet. We can reduce the amount of fat we use when cooking by choosing cooking methods such as boiling, grilling or poaching. You could serve vegetables and salad plain with dressing on the side for people to add themselves. Replace some meat with vegetables or beans in casserole. Stew and caress and skim the fat off the top before serving it if you can. Go for a lower fat version of dairy product, for example, semi skim milk, low fat yogurt, or reduced fat cheese. When cooking with mince, use the lean option. If you're making lasagne, moussaka, chili beef, or cottage pie, Dry fry it first and then drain off the fat before adding other ingredients. Choose lean cut of meat and cut off any visible fat. The food industry is working hard to reduce the amount of saturated fat in different food products. So it is important to check the label when making food choices. Most food labels give figures for the product's fat and saturated fat content. Some food labels show the figures in different types of fat saturates, monounsaturates, and polyunsaturates. Another great idea is to choose products providing unsaturated and polyunsaturated fats instead of those high in saturated fat. Try having oily fish, such as mackerel, salmon or trout, for your evening meal. Choose low-fat spreads instead of butter and spread thinly. Now remember that foods containing fat provide energy and essential fatty acids. We need a bit of fat in our diet, but it's important to moderate our intake. Thanks, Nabil, and thank you for watching. For more information on fat, you can check out our websites at nutrition.org.uk or foodeffectoflife.org.uk. Bye-bye.